Donnie Darko is one entry in an increasingly slim output of Hollywood films with impact. This surreal drama, masterfully directed by Richard Kelly, simply blew me away. Donnie Darko is essentially a grim, poignant study of mental illness, only with time travel arcs and doomsday predictions hastening the compelling story. Jake Gyllenhaal, in the standout role of his career, stars as Darko, a sharp yet disturbed teenager suffering from hallucinations. After being saved from a jet engine crash by an imaginary friend, who informs him of the end of the world, the unmedicated Darko is pressured into acts that divide the town and alienate those who care for him. Frank, the aforementioned imaginary friend, is a truly disturbing creation and the most I iconic element of the film. His appearance is reminiscent of a skeletal Totoro or a perverse Harvey. Present only in Darko's dreams and sleepwalking, Frank may be easily seen as Darko's own destructive subconsciousness, thus highlighting the complexity of Gyllenhaal's character. Darko is a severe and unstable young man who commits many alarming acts of vandalism, yet is still positioned as a victim, owing to, Frank's, uh, owing to Frank manipulating him in moments of weakness. It is a pity that Gyllenhaal uh, has appeared in relatively few notable films since Donnie Darko, save for Jarhead and Brokeback Mountain, neither of which I cared for. As in this film, he superbly juggles uh, romance, overbearing parents, and school life with Darko's delusions, scheming imaginary friend, and the doom that is inexorably ticking down. This, in my mind, is Gyllenhaal's finest performance, as every reaction and outburst is, is credible and in intriguing to watch. The supporting cast is generally excellent, with no weak members in the bunch. Maggie Gyllenhaal, Jake's real-life sister, plays Darko's sibling, with whom Donnie holds a certain potty-mouthed respect. Patrick Swayze, or should I say the late Patrick Swayze, uh, greases up his scenes as a smarmy self-help guru with an immoral secret, while Beth Grant, as a fawning supporter and PE teacher, receives a satisfying comeuppance as a result. Of particular note is Drew Barrymore, who was also the ex executive producer of this film. Barrymore has matured over the years into a fine actress and an industrious player in the field, and I would have liked to have seen more of her in this film, as she and Darko appear as kindred spirits. Both are reserved and contemplative, rejecting the judgmental society around them, and pursue the truths which aren't always pretty. For the first ten minutes or so, I was worried about the pacing of Donnie Darko, as it seemed as if Frank's doomsday prediction had been glanced over in favor of personal drama. But the rabbit's many appearances constantly snapped this prediction back to the forefront of our minds and the narrative, divided into acts, frames its 28 days as literally counting down to oblivion. The cinematography is evocative, uh, the effects realistic, and the ending a joy for anyone acquainted with the Back to the Future movies. Funnily enough, 
The time travel ending is, in itself, a paradox, in that the time warp elements are less confusing than the human aspects. The wormhole conclusion is predictable, in that it gives you the same satisfaction as solving a meaty riddle. But the human scuffle comes out of the blue with little context. It occurred to me recently that none of this year's films, not even District 9, have remained in my mind, in my memory, as outstanding. I only wish, then, that I could have seen this bleak, superbly executed gem in the cinemas, as it would have left even more of an impression on me than now. Donnie Darko, like the films on my top nine list, is one of those exceptional, if slightly pessimistic movies that will stay with you, like Darko's pesky rabbit, for years to come.